Hi, this is Bethany Marshall from Morgan James Publishing, and today I'm speaking with our author, Leslie Berry. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Bethany. Thank you for having me. Oh, thanks so much for being here, and we're so excited about your new book, um, which is New Work Minutemen. Uh, do you happen to have a copy of it right there with you? I, I do. Here's uh, the, the book and the cover with the real um, photo on the front with the love story up above. Oh, so amazing. Um, we love this book so much. and It's such a, a really wonderful story. Uh, could you tell us a bit about the story and uh, maybe walk us through the narrative, the plot, some of the main characters? Sure, sure. So um, Nork Minutemen is actually based on um, a family story of mine about my uncle. And I actually wrote it with my mom, who um, is 95 now. So um, we worked on it for about two years, and uh, it's a mixture of action and drama. Um, and the drama comes um, in that it's a love story, and it's a star-crossed love story that's uh, doomed for failure. So its setting is in Newark, New Jersey during the 1930s, and um, it's set across a little-known historical backdrop of what was the rising German-American Nazi party in America during the Depression. So the story follows a Jewish boxer, his name is Yale, and he is part of a group of boxers called the Newark Minutemen. And the Newark Minutemen were organized by the mafia and our government. Um, and they were, they were organized to go up against this, uh, this party, this Nazi party called the official name was called the German American Bond. And um, the North Minutemen would go out, they would act as a resistance, they would go undercover um, with the goal of thwarting and stopping this party from basically taking over America. And along the way, Yale happens to fall in love with the daughter of the enemy. So you've got all this conflict, as you can imagine, going on over this world of conflict. And the way I wrote the book is um, uh, I wrote it through four narrators. So you have Yale and Krista, and you also have um, the villains. The, uh, uh, the head of the American Bund, was, his name was Fuhrer Fritz Kuhn, and then the head of the mafia, his name was Longies Wilman. So um, I, I wrote it this way, and, and as I was writing it, um, people were like, you know, this is too complicated for a... a this was my uh, uh, first book, and it actually I'd actually written the screenplay first, um, and I'm translating it over, and they're like, this is going to be really complicated. But I really wanted to have this idea of um, the reader being able to empathize why somebody would follow a, a, an American Hitler in America back then, or why they would work for the mafia. And so I wanted them to see the kindness and the wickedness, and even the mistakes that all these different characters made. Um, so, uh, so I've told this story through the eyes of these four characters so that the reader can examine why America closed our eyes back then to the satellite that Hitler was building in America for his Nazi empire. Um, and in fact, this story has been buried um, I, I had never learned it in school. I don't know if, if you had, um, but if it had come true or if these guys and, and other people um, trying to stop this party hadn't come through, we would, we would be living a different history in America right now. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, so could you tell me a little bit about how you got the idea for this? Sure. So, um, so my mom, who's 95 now and going strong, um, five years ago at her 90th, we had a, a reunion and a, 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 a birthday party and a reunion for her birthday. And um, so, she, so she was born in Newark. She was the daughter of an immigrant family, four older brothers, big, big family, big Jewish family. And all her life, we'd grown up with these stories of, um, you know, she grew up during the Great Depression and pandemics and, of course, the war. And so she told lots of stories and her brothers would all tell these stories. And as kids, we kind of never listened. But at her 90th, they started talking about my Uncle Harry. 
and we all knew he was a prize fighting boxer. We'd read the newspaper article. We, he's got the little trophy. Um, but then they started saying, hey, Esther, do you remember when your brother used to go out and, and beat up the Nazis? And I was like, well, what do you mean beat up the Nazis like over in Germany? And they're like, no, no, right here in New Jersey, there was a Nazi party taking over, in fact, across the whole country. And I, this story shook me and I, I became possessed with understanding what was going on before the war or interwar, if you will, during, during the Great Depression. And it turned out that um, there was a, uh, an American Hitler and um, he uh, um, controlled our United States and he divided it up into three and there were thousands of cells um, that he had created with these fighting groups um, that were preparing. They would wear the Hitler uniforms. The, they would actually use our NRA guns for guns. They would go to our National Guard to be trained. And um, they, uh, they uh, so, so, so he was creating this whole organization and he also created it as a for-profit organization where he had one company that was a newspaper that sent out information or misinformation, whichever you want to call it. He had this group. And he also had a, um, 25 Nazi youth camps where he bought land across the United States and created these camps for kids to go to. And in fact, um, the one in New York, in Yapang, Long Island, um, they it came out later in the FBI documents that uh, they were raping the girls in order with the goal of increasing the Aryan population in America. So, um, so part of the story is, so the other thing that this American Hitler had was sort of an SS, um, which are the secret guard. They called them the OD. And so Yale goes undercover and trains as an OD and gets very close to the inner circle to topple uh, this party. So that's wow. sort of the, where it came from. What a story and, and what an undertaking to tell it and, and through so many, so many lenses. Um, I really like what you say about um, having readers be able to empathize with the different characters and the different perspectives. I think that uh, really makes for um, really an involved reading process and uh, just love how you are telling this story in general. Um, and I know you, you mentioned a bit earlier on um, that you're also working on a screenplay. So um, and I love the, the inspiration behind the book too with um, you know having those conversations with your family and just diving into the history within your own family and just unearthing this this whole story that um, I think so many people are going to be fascinated by. Uh, so could you talk a little bit about the process of you know working on a screenplay and a book and how that was for you as an author? Sure so um, so when I first um, started working on this on this book uh, or you know, I, should, I should say on this story, um, I more come from an orientation of um, film. And uh, so I had never written, a, honestly, a screenplay before. Um, but I went to one of my favorite, the Titanic. And I said, okay, I'm going to create over a historical setting this idea of this love story to make it more approachable and um, all my characters are actually either real characters or based on real characters, but I've put the love story together that that part is fictionalized. And um, so I created, uh, I, I researched, um, um, I, I uncovered thousands of pages of FBI documents that are fairly newly unsealed, I think 2012. And I found um, 12 boxes of diaries from this other guy that had gone undercover. And so I gathered all this research, put together a timeline, and created a screenplay. And um, back then, which was maybe three or four, three years ago or so now, um, I, uh, it, the timing was such that there was a feeling of, gosh, this is timely. And also um, the idea that it was uh, young people and in America, um, that was an interesting theme for many people to connect onto. So anyway, 
I um, was able to sell it to a group called Fullwell 73, and they're, they're from the UK, but their fifth partner is James Corden from The Late Late Show. So they're kind of this hot, hot new company. And um, as of right now, we've uh, attached uh, the screenwriters, the professional screenwriters. Um, and uh, we are in talks with a really great director. I, I can't say right now who it is, but um, it would be the, the, the sensibility would be um, just really gritty. And, uh, and um, like I said, this love story of conflict with people and also the timing of people. So um, hopefully if COVID will calm down, we can move forward. And my mom is, like I said, she's 95. She keeps saying, come on, come on. So hopefully it will see that soon. Amazing. Well, I know a lot of people love to read the book first anyway. So as that's under, um, under construction and getting developed and built out, that's so exciting. Um, and thank you so much, Leslie, for talking with me today and diving deeper into uh, this book. Um, I think a lot of people, again, are going to be you know, fascinated uh, by this book. Um, and so I know people also might want to learn a little bit more about you or about the book. So where's the best place for uh, our viewers today to go find you um, online or connect with you? Yes, yeah, so I have a, a website, NorkMinuteman.com. And um, it's got a lot of the backstory. It's got some interviews. And I've even created this. I've come across um, all of these people that actually used to be Nork Minutemen. And so they're sending me pictures. I'm creating a whole gallery of, of Minutemen um, on there as well. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much. And congratulations on your new book release. We're so excited. Thank you so much.